Hello, today on Kaizen Consciousness, we will investigate if your why is actually strong enough. Welcome, Kai N is here. This is Kaizen Consciousness, where you can learn to master your life from the inside out. Last week, we looked at your why. If you did not look at this video yet, I highly suggest that you go take a look at it, please. Okay? It is going to help you investigate whether or not you have a why. Today, we're going to be looking at whether or not that why is actually strong enough. This is really important for you to discern. If you don't have a why that's strong enough, then your purpose will not be sustainable. Tony Robbins says that if your why is strong enough, you can bear any how. So, how you get there is not as important as why. Okay? You have to have a goal in mind. It is your true compass shot. Your why needs to be bigger than you. If your why is strong enough, then you have just created the leverage that it takes for you to be able to finish executing it. For example, consider this. Are your children a strong enough why? A large enough why will permit you to have passion throughout various moments in your day. It will sustain you. It will help you move forward. Okay, so this large enough why will actually allow you to enter a state called flow. This is a theory proposed by a famous psychologist named Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. And flow is a state where time disappears, you love what you're doing, and you give everything that you have towards achieving whatever goal you have in that state. Think about this. In the morning when you get up, what is your overall reason for entering into your day? That right there is where your why comes into play. A strong why will allow you to have a generic reason for every single day to allow passion to flow into your actual moments. When you enter this state of flow and your why is strong enough, according to the law of rhythm, you will now be entering into an endless supply of energy. Think of stepping into a river. You know that river is flowing downstream. As you get into it, you know there's a current. If you were to float with that current, it would be relatively easy. But trying to swim against that current, now that's really difficult. And that's what the state of flow is. The state of flow is when you are basically flowing down the stream with the current in play. Think of a leaf flowing down that river. In that state of flow, everything comes easy. Everything makes sense. Everything locks into place. So how do you achieve being in that state of flow? And the answer is having a strong enough why. A big enough why lets you get up every day with no regrets. With a strong enough why, you will always find a way to get there. It keeps you going. The momentum keeps you going. A bigger why helps you stay motivated. It helps you stay focused. I've heard it said that a big enough why speaks to your soul. It makes your soul cry. It makes your soul dance. That's the level we're talking about here. Remind yourself often of this why during the day. Okay, this will help you keep on going. It will keep you focused. It will stop you from getting discouraged. It will help you to make plans that align that will then create more momentum for this why to be perpetuated. Small whys are for small reasons. Okay? They're for situations. Whereas big whys are life reasons. So if you're lucky enough to make it to old age, and as Eric Erickson said, you can now look back upon how you lived your life. How well did I live my life? If you lived in accordance with large enough whys, then your life will have absolutely no regrets and you will feel fulfilled. And one might ask, what about making money? I'm sure that that is at the top of many people's list. I have to have enough money to live and wow, if I only had a lot of money. Well, money by itself isn't a large enough why. Okay? That's why people always end up doing something else with their money. With a large enough why, you will move away from an egocentric state into a community state. You will want to help others. It will go beyond just buying goods and services and that you have more of other things and more of the same things. You will actually want to now create 
a vision that is community bound. As I mentioned in the last video, Simon Sinek in his book, Start With Why, he says that people will buy your why, okay? So Apple, uh, Southwest Airlines, Whole Foods, people buy the why of these companies. Imagine how strong that makes that why, that other people will not only take money, but also their time and opportunity cost in order to support that vision and to align with that vision. Now this applies to individuals as well. People instantly recognize your why. When you speak to someone without even knowing it, subconsciously, maybe even unconsciously, people are seeking your why and they want to know whether or not they can align with you. If your why is aligned, you know that you can trust each other. This in turn creates a heartfelt community and that heartfelt community will become an agency for change. When you're rooted in mind-body coherence, and again, we spoke about this in the last video, please go back and take a look at that if this is new for you. Mind-body coherence, if that is present, it will lead to an emotional balance. You will find that at that point, everything starts to align in your life. And I know that's what you are looking for because that's what I have been looking for. And that's why I feel that it's important to share this. A strong life in my mind is a balanced life where you're not always out of kilter. You're not getting pulled around by all these activities and life events. There are many of them. So it's nice to be centered. And that center comes from when you are actually what I call driving your ship. And you drive that ship when you have a destination. And that destination is defined by the strength of your why. So what is a heart-driven why? Well, losing weight in and for itself, that's not a strong enough heartfelt why. Losing weight because you're part of a family that loves you and they want you around and you want to be healthy and you want to have positive impact on these lives, that's a strong why and that helps you to lose the weight. What about money? Should I save money? Well, saving money for the sake of saving money, it might be nice. It might be a good feeling to feel secure in that. But at the same time, when you start using that money in a community project, whether it's your family or whether it's larger than that, you will see that a new momentum begins. And we're human beings. We act in a social setting, so it makes sense that we would help perpetuate that. Let's take a look at the argument of happiness versus fulfillment. Now, happiness is unfortunately sort of short term. Okay? It is actually fulfillment that is long term. Okay? So now my why automatically starts to become larger than it was in the beginning. If I get up and I say, I want to have a nice day today. Okay, well a nice day is a wonderful thing, but what can I do where that why is really strong and where it moves me forward to wanting to complete certain tasks that perpetuate that why being able to move forward and move to a higher level. If I take this why and I align it with fulfillment over happiness, it will be long term. It will last. It will have self-fulfilling powers. It will gain momentum. People that share the similar why and want to help support that why will help support you and now you get to spread this why to other people and to make it larger. And this is what we mean by a strong enough why. It's strong enough when it impacts other people in a positive way and helps release some of their pain and burden. Consider this statement. If your dreams aren't big enough or scary enough, then they're really not the type that we're talking about with a big why, okay? They should scare you a little bit. And you should then wanna follow through. And when you have done that, you will have moved to the next level in terms of that why. The moment you step into this bigger why, you will actually notice that more opportunities appear. And these opportunities will allow you then to do greater work. So consider what would you regret not having done? Okay, just give that a second. What would you regret not having done? And that is a good place to start to build a large why, a big enough why. Once you have this large enough why, and you're starting to align your daily activities and behaviors towards that why, you will be amazed how simple it actually is to achieve the how of that why because opportunities will emerge that will allow you to do certain things that you normally would never ever take or have happen to you. 
So let's take a look at some action steps. I'd like you to give some really thoughtful examination to your why. Maybe it's not just one why, but I would start with one. Map it out. Get yourself a large piece of paper, a poster board, or maybe you can do it on a board somewhere. And map out this why and see, is it actually big enough? Or is making money, for example, I want to make $100,000, I want to make a million dollars. Is there something beyond that that you would do with that million dollars or that hundred thousand or that ten thousand dollars or the next twenty dollars? Because if you want to do something with that money, then what you're actually saying is that there's a why larger than the money itself. So it's like that. Take your time. This may take you several hours. This may take you several days. It shouldn't matter since this is your life, right? The test of your why should meet the following. One, how do you plan on your personal growth? Two. What do you want to contribute to yourself, to your family, to your community, to your society, to your planet? I mean, think about how far reaching this actually gets. Three, what do you want to experience in life? Four, if you stick with this plan, how will it transform your life in the next five years? Can you visualize what it'll be like five years from now? Allow yourself to think big. Okay. You're looking for this large why, so think as big as you can. Just brainstorm. You'll know it's big enough when you wake up in the morning and it basically consumes you. You start to think about it right then and there. You can't wait to get up and go do something about it. Maybe you can't even fall asleep and you just choose to get up and work through half if not all of the night to start to put this into action. And you will see that every day of your life there will be more opportunities, more activities and more support for your why to come to fruition. If you found that why, you will stick with it. It will start to define you. Okay? You will realize that that's who you are and why you're actually here. And if you go back to the prior video, we talked about your higher purpose, which means you have now found it. What a glorious thing that would be. Think about that for a second. If you could actually say you have found your higher purpose in this life. Now, can you change it? Of course you can. Down the road, your why may even get bigger, but you'll notice that you're going to have an enthusiasm and a richness, a desire for the beauty of life. With a great heart-centered why, something else is going to happen. Other people are going to entrust you with making change in this world. This big enough why will become a blueprint into your soul. You're going to gain permission to talk to people because you're going to show up for them the same way that you want someone to show up for you. All right, so what's the walk away from today's video? Well, I would say to you, please take a moment, examine if your why is big enough, then sit down, do some of the action steps that I gave you, and see if your why actually meets those criteria. And if it does, you're going to see such a radical shift in your life. You're going to be happier. You're going to be on a mission and you're going to know what and why you're doing it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time on Kaizen Consciousness.